Dear brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to listen to his word, let us offer our hearts, our minds, everything that is dear to us, everything that is a part of us, let us offer it unto Jesus. When we listen to his word, it is not only our ears, our heart is responsive, our soul is thirsty. Let us close our eyes for a moment and let us offer this heart and this soul. That is where his word reaches, that is where his word touches. Lord, you speak this day. If you have brought us here, if you have made us sit in your presence to listen to your word, there will always be your plans, something that you have to say, something that I have to correct, something that I have to know. And I believe, Jesus, on this day you have something special in store for me. You have a message, a message for my good, not for my destruction. You have a plan, a plan for my good, not for my destruction. You have graces, Graces for my good, not for my destruction. I believe in all of these. And I know, Lord, if you have brought me here, you will bring to completion all the plans you have for me. Help me, Lord, to listen to your word. Let me understand, let me grasp your word. And let my soul and my heart be satisfied with what you give me. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, we are in this beautiful season of Christmas. And one day that is very special in this season is the feast of the Holy Family. A blessed feast, a feast that has a lot of meaning, a feast that has a lot of message. In the Bible, if we go through the Gospels, not much is actually said about the Holy Family. True, if we go through the Gospel of Matthew, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of John, basically Matthew and Luke would give us a bit of an idea of the Holy Family, about how Jesus was born, what the situation was. But you group it all together 
and you might just get a couple of chapters or a few chapters that is connected to the Holy Family about Jesus, Mary and Joseph. But the one thing that we have to realize is when was this family called as a holy family? Obviously, it wasn't before Jesus' birth. Obviously, it wasn't before Jesus came into the picture. The holy family was not a holy family when it was only about Joseph and Mary. The holy family became a holy family from the time Mary conceived Jesus in her womb. From that time onwards, it was called a holy family. From that time onwards came in the message of the holy family. Without Jesus, there is no holy family. I remember an incident that took place around two or three years back. I'd gone shopping to get a gift for a friend. And I'd gone to this religious store. A lot of beautiful statues around, a lot of beautiful pious articles. And I kept looking at the shelf that had a lot of statues of the Holy Family, all in different shapes and sizes. And I was looking out for something unique. And as I kept looking at the shelf, I saw right in the midst of all those statues of the Holy Family, there was this beautiful statue of Mary and Joseph together. But there was no Jesus there. And I found it very unique. Usually you wouldn't find Mary and Joseph together without Jesus. You would either find Mary holding Jesus if she's alone, or you would find a single statue of Mary, or you would find a single statue of Joseph, but you would never find a statue of Joseph and Mary together without Jesus. And I found this very unique. I was interested. I pointed towards the shelf and I told them, I would like that statue of the Holy Family. And the person in the shop kept looking around. He started touching every statue, asking me, is it this? I told him, no, you can see that one where there is the Holy Family just together. And I kept insisting on that statue. He couldn't find it. Ultimately, he located it. And when he located it, he looked at me and he said, but father, this is not the holy family. There is no Jesus in it. And that is when it struck me, it is true. Without Jesus, there is no holy family. Apparently in that statue, as it was being, trans as it was being transported, the little Jesus who was around 10 or 12 years old came off and there is a little space, an empty space over there. And that is why that statue is only with Mary and Joseph and Jesus not being there. Jesus has been separated, broken off from the statue. But it is so true. Without Jesus, there is no Mary. Without Jesus, there is no holy family. Without Jesus, there is no presence of the holy family. There is no blessings of the holy family. It becomes a holy family only with the presence of the Lord. The Holy Family isn't holy because Mary was holy. The Holy Family isn't holy because Joseph was holy. The importance to the Holy Family is not because of Mary's greatness. The importance to the Holy Family is not because of Joseph's greatness or because he was righteous. The presence or the term Holy Family is because of the presence of Jesus in it. The beauty of the Holy Family is not because Mary was pretty. The beauty of the Holy Family is not because Joseph was righteous or Joseph was handsome. The beauty of the Holy Family is because of the presence of Jesus. And that is always the case. Maybe yes, Joseph had David's lineage. Maybe, yes, Joseph was a wonderful man. Maybe, yes, Mary was a wonderful woman. It could all be facts. But the fact is, it is a holy family because of the presence of Jesus in it. And that is the one reason why the holy family became beautiful. In the Gospels we read, 
everywhere this holy family went, they touched the lives of people around. They passed on the fragrance of love. It could have been with Elizabeth. When the holy family went there, she was pregnant with child. The presence of Jesus was there. The fragrance of love was passed around. Everywhere they went around, the holy family went around, they passed on the fragrance of love. They went into the manger where Jesus was born. The fragrance of love passed around. It passed around to the simple shepherds, to the lowest in society. They were able to pass around the fragrance of love. It passed around even to the three kings, the fragrance of love given to the highest in society. From the shepherds to the king, they passed around the fragrance of love. From the three kings, it would go on to many others around the world. The fragrance of love passed around. All because of the presence of Jesus in the Holy Family. That was the sole reason why the fragrance of love passed around. Dear brothers and sisters, today as we are celebrating this beautiful feast, let us ask ourselves, is the presence of Jesus there in our families? Is the presence of Jesus there as a central part of our families? When the Holy Family passed around the fragrance of love, they did it not because they were comfortable. They did it not because they had a lot of things to support them. They were a poor family. They lived in poverty. They ran around as refugees. They lived in danger every moment knowing that someone is waiting to kill that child. It wasn't easy. It was difficult. In the midst of unstability, Joseph couldn't work. He was a carpenter. But these people kept moving from place to place. There wasn't stability. There wasn't financial comforts. There wasn't a comfort of a roof on their head. They struggled. Life was hard. Life was difficult. Life was painful. They were busy all the time, moving from place to place. But even in the midst of all this brokenness, even in the midst of all this suffering, even in the midst of all this pain, even in the midst of all this instability, even though they were unstable, even though they were struggling, they were able to pass on the fragrance of love. All because of the presence of Jesus. Today look into our families. Today maybe we are living in the midst of suffering and pain. The world has still not come out of its recession. We are struggling. Life is not yet stable. Families are not yet stable. Situations are not yet stable. Financially, maybe we might not be stable. But in the midst of all this pain, in the midst of all this difficulty, in the midst of all this sadness and sorrow and, and strife, and in the midst of all the challenges that we go through, are our families becoming fragrance of love? Is Jesus there as the center? If Jesus is not there as the center, definitely that family will never be able to become a source of a fragrance of love. They will not be able to pass on the fragrance of love. That family will always struggle to give love. A family that doesn't have Jesus in it. A family that doesn't have prayer in it. A family that doesn't have the presence of the Lord in it. They can be doing many things. You can be a family that goes to church. You can be a family that eats together. You can be a family that enjoys together. But if you do not have Jesus there as a central part of the family, that family will never be able to pass on the fragrance of love. That family at some point or the other with the burdens of this world, with the challenges of this world, that family at some point or the other will crack up. And that family that is cracked up cannot pass on a fragrance of love. Dear brothers and sisters, look into the inner depths of our families. 
Is Jesus present there? Can people look at our families and say this is a holy family because Jesus is present? Will people look at our families and say this is a holy family because every day there is prayer in that house? Can we honestly look into our hearts and say is this a holy family because we are passing on fragrance of love to our brothers, to our sisters, to our friends, to our relatives? to strangers who come to us? Are we able to pass on a fragrance of love? Or what is happening in our families? Is Jesus not central there? Maybe we'll always have an excuse saying that life is tough. Life is burdensome. Financially, we are struggling. But it does not excuse us. Because somewhere or the other, there is no prayer in the house. Somewhere or the other, The presence of Jesus is not there in that home. And when the presence of Jesus is not there in that home, in that family, that will never be called a holy family. It will be just a presence of a few individuals who are living together. Not a presence of people who spread the fragrance of love. The Bible tells us there is one moment when the holy family was separated. When in the temple, Jesus stayed back and Mother Mary and Joseph went forth. And the moment they realized it, the word of God tells us frantically they went around searching. Because they knew the essence of their family was the Lord. They frantically left everything else. All the others kept moving on. They didn't move on with them. They decided it's time we stopped. They decided it's time we went back frantically and searched for Jesus. They found the Lord. The holy family was holy again. Are our families missing Jesus somewhere? Have we lost him somewhere? In that case, it's time. Frantically go and search. Find the Lord again in your family. Because if one day we do not find the Lord... And we keep moving on with the others because life is going on. We don't have time to stop. We don't have time to stop and turn back and try and find the Jesus that is lost. Ultimately, that family will disintegrate. It will not be a holy family anymore. If you're going through life, if your family is going through life, having lost Jesus somewhere or the other, stop, turn back, go and find the Lord. Frantically search for him, find him. So that your family will be holy again. So that your family will be a blessing again. So that your family will become a fragrance of love again. Or we will end up going forth. And when we go forth, there will be an emptiness that has been created because the Lord is not there. And then we will decorate that emptiness with things of the world. But never will it become the holy family. Never will it remain the holy family. I remember when I had asked that person for the statue of the Holy Family, he gave it to me. And he gave it to me because Jesus was not there. He looked at me and he said, Father, this statue, I will give it to you for a reduced price. Because Jesus is not there in it, I will give it to you cheaper. So true. A family without Jesus is much cheaper. A family without Jesus is less valuable. A family without the presence of the Lord will not have the same value that a family with the presence of the Lord has. He looked at me showing that statue, that empty space that was created because Jesus' statue had come off. He looked at me and he said, Father, into that empty space, now maybe you can put flowers. If you want, you can put a photograph. It all sounded very good. It all sounded very unique. Into that empty space, I can put flowers. It was true. Into that empty space, I can put a photograph. It was true. Into that empty space, I could fill fill it up and decorate it with something beautiful. It was true. But the fact is, that empty space was meant for Jesus. Many times into that empty space, when the Lord moves out, or when we've lost the Lord, we put in a lot of decorations. We think it looks beautiful. 
Our families can be decorated with a lot of money. Our families can be decorated with a lot of comfort. Our families can be decorated with a lot of name, with a lot of fame. Our families can be decorated with a lot of things that come from this world. But let us not forget that space was meant only for the Lord. And as long as that space is meant for the Lord, it cannot be substituted with things of the world. You cannot substitute what is meant for the creator and replace it with a creation. You cannot substitute what is meant for the creator and replace it with a creation. It could be your work. It could be your job. It could be your ministry. It could be your finance. It could be your comforts. It could be your pleasure. It could be your enjoyment. It could be your going out. It could be many things. It could be beautiful. It looks nice. But that space was meant for Jesus in your family. And if Jesus is not there, don't fill that empty space with things of this world. Because one day it is durable. It will just go off. One day it is weak. It will just go off. And then that emptiness will always remain. That is why Blaise Pascal said so beautifully, there is an emptiness in every human being. And that emptiness can be filled only with Christ. There is that emptiness in every family. And that emptiness can be filled only with Christ. Because that is the place meant for Christ. Today, are your families just families? Or are your families the holy family of God? Let us ask ourselves a question that we should answer. A message that this, this particular day is giving us. A message to make our families filled with Christ. Today, turn and look at the upteen number of families across the world. So many countries, they've given up on God. They don't want God anymore. Jesus is not essential in the family anymore. What has happened? Today, divorce has increased. Families are broken up. Children are shattered. Children don't have a direction. Children don't have parental love. Children are not able to kneel down and pray. Children don't know how to pray because families didn't pray. Because families did away with Jesus. Because people don't want, even in this season of Christmas, they don't want Christ within it. Christ is out. In the families, Christ is out. In our schools, Christ is out. Everywhere, Christ is out. Bring him back in. If in your families he has been sent out, bring him back in. That is when the family will stay together. That is when the family will become a blessing to others. If the family cannot become a blessing within the family, it cannot become a blessing outside of the family. If a family cannot live in love within the family, it cannot live in love outside the family. It can do many things outside, but that doesn't mean it becomes a blessing to others. A family without the presence of Jesus within it will never become a blessing for those around it. Let us look into our families. Let us desire to bring Jesus into our families. Let this day be all about bringing Jesus back into our families. To sit down in prayer every day as a family and pray. Giving Jesus that most important position. Let him sit there. If he's been lost, go and search for him. Find him and do not stop till you find him as a family. And that is when your family will be called the holy family. And starting from the lowest till the highest, to starting from the shepherds till the kings, your family will turn into a fragrance of love for everyone around you. Your family will be a blessing. It will be called a holy family. Let us close our eyes for a moment. And let us look back into our own families. Maybe today we have lost him. Somewhere on the wayside, something happened, something went wrong, some mistake, some carelessness, but Jesus was lost. Lord, we realize this day, somewhere on our journey, you were lost. 
we went on filling that space with a lot of material things a lot of comforts and a lot of pleasure a lot of work a lot of our own ideas and thought patterns lord we were wrong we tried to substitute you with things of the world we tried to substitute the creator with the created we sorry lord if we have lost you on the way help us to find you again give us the grace that our families might sit in prayer give us the grace that our families might give you the most important position in our lives and from there that our families be called holy families of god let every person who enters into our home feel the presence of you over there let every person who comes broken into our home feel your holy presence there when we as a family go out to others let them feel the fragrance of love let them experience the fragrance of love lord this day on this beautiful feast we pray unto you come back into our families help us to find you again and be central in our families without you lord our family will not stay together without you lord our families will not turn into fragrance of love for others let people be able to see our families let them be able to say this is a holy family of god in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen god bless you